everybody, this is Oksana and today I'm going to talk to you about tumbling and I'm going to do a tumbling demonstration as well. So this is a tumbler I have. It's the Latrone 3A. Purchased it online in a little kit and I'll show you the other items I got which is the steel shot and the burnishing powder. And this is a piece of jewelry that has just been tumbled. It is oxidized copper. So um, I will demonstrate it, but I put it into the tumbler right after I oxidized it. I, of course, um, cleaned it first, so it was free of the oxidizing solution, but it was completely um, like a black color. And so you can see the color that it is right now. This is not normally how I leave my jewelry because I think it needs an additional polish to get it really bright and shiny. So I use something called Pro Polishing Pads, which I will also demonstrate. But I just want to show you what the tumbler does. It kind of cleans a lot of the darkness off of oxidized copper so that all that's left to do is give it one quick final polish. Now I normally, and I'll link it below, I have an old video where I demonstrate oxidizing and in that video I use um, steel wool, fine steel wool with a little bit of soap and water and I polish up my pieces afterwards. So this replaces that step. Now normally it looks really nice after um, cleaning it with the steel wool but then Usually, um, maybe by like the next day, at least for me, my pieces get just a tiny bit dark again. So I go in with the pro polishing pads and I polish them up. So for me, the pro polishing pad is a step that um, I have been using. I think that I started doing it after I made that video, so I don't mention them in that video. Back then I only knew about the um, steel wool. So basically for me, the tumbler replaces the steel wool. It um, kind of saves me a little bit of time um, doing that initial polish with the steel wool, but I still have to do the final polish. So um, it's up to you whether you think a tumbler is worth it or not for you because it is an expensive thing, but um, I guess it depends on your current process and how you clean and polish your oxidized jewelry, um, but for me it has been worth it. So here is the barrel of my tumbler and inside of it I have this stainless steel shot and you can see it's just different little, like, little balls, little sticks. It just came that way, it was a mix. And then um, I also have some burnishing powder and this was a little kit that I bought um, I am in Australia, so I just kind of googled it and some like jewelry website came up and they had the Latrone tumblers and then they had this little kit um, that came with the shot and the burnishing powder and so that's how <laughs> I ended up buying it. Um, but I think you can buy all the things separately. Uh, now the burnishing powders, I heard some people um, say that you can use soap. I haven't tried that because I've also been warned that some soaps can eat away at the rubber and kind of destroy your tumbler. So I've just been using this because this is what, you know, it came with it. And the instructions are here. It says to use a heaped teaspoon to 3.8 liters. So I just use a little bit. Um, I'll just put it in right now to show you now because I'm holding the camera. With my right hand, <laughs> I'm gonna have to do this with my left hand, so I hope that I don't spill it everywhere. But basically, I just take a little bit because I don't have 3.8 liters by any means, so I just put a little bit in here. And in terms of how much shot to use, um, this particular tumbler, I just noticed a little piece <laughs> fell, um, cannot exceed three pounds. And so I just um, kind of weighed it at first, the first time I did it. So I had a good idea of how much shot is like a little bit less than three pounds. So when I add my jewelry, it'll kind of, you know, not exceed three pounds. So um, what I do after I put that stuff in is I just put in some water. 
and it, it's enough so that it covers the shot and it's above the shot. And I might need to add a little more after I put in my jewelry. But you want it to just almost cover your jewelry. That's what I read anyway. So this is my jewelry. Um, I like to oxidize outside because oxidizing solution is quite smelly. And if you're ever in doubt about a stone, which I am a lot of the time, as you can tell, um, you can just oxidize the frame without the stone. So that is what I'm doing with most of these, except for a few that I think will be fine. But if you're ever, you know, worried about it, I think technically it doesn't say anywhere that you can tumble stones. So I think you might you're not supposed to tumble stones. Um, so I put it all in and let me hold it up to the light. You can kind of see there's not that much water. I'm going to add just a little more. Okay, so I went in the shade because I feel like the sun was so bright you could barely see anything. But this is a good amount. I think it just barely covers the jewelry. So then it comes with this lid that you put in. Kind of snaps in like that. And then it has this other lid. <laughs> and you just want to really get that on. Because it can be hard. And then you put this little disc on. And you have this little thing. that you screw on and that is how you assemble this portion. So now it's all set to tumble. So now I'm in my kitchen. Um, I like to run the tumbler indoors. It is a little noisy but I just worry about it overheating in the hot sun or if it rains you know it getting wrecked because it got wet. So all you do is you just put this in and then the little gap in here kind of sits on this metal thing and that holds it in place. And then um, I'm going to turn it on and then you'll hear how noisy it is. Okay, so I'm going to let that run. I'm going to turn it on after <laughs> so that you can hear me talk. Um, but I'm going to let it run for probably about 50 minutes. Um, I usually do anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, um, depending on just like how much stuff I have in there. So maybe like 50, 55 minutes, and then I'll show you how it looks. All right, so it's been 55 minutes, and I took this out, and um, I guess let's see if I can open it one-handed <laughs> while holding a camera. So you would just unscrew that, and then this cap usually gets pretty stuck on here. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to do this without holding it at least a little with the other hand. So one second. Okay, sorry about that. I had to do it off camera, but I basically just kind of you stick this in and you push to loosen this lid. And then you can do the same thing with this as well if it's not um, coming out easily. And here's what you get, a bunch of soapy bubbles. So now what you have to do is drain it. So um, I have this little strainer here. And this is just extra stainless steel shot. I just don't have a good place to keep it, so I just keep it all in here. I know it'll get kind of mixed up with everything. But just pour that in. And of course, you have to wash these to get the bubbles off, but here is what it looks like. I'll go ahead and um, give these a rinse just with water so that you can get a better look. So here's what they look like. I rinse them off. And you can see these are not quite as um, light in color as they are when you use stainless steel wool. So there is one more step that I do after this. 
but they don't look completely black anymore like they did when I first oxidized. There's definitely some highlights that have been revealed and a lot of the tarnish has been removed. So um, I'm going to dry these now and then I'll show you what I do to kind of finish them up. So the pro polishing pads I use look like this. I buy them from Rio Grande. I'm sure there's other places you can buy them. Comes in a bag of 50 of them. Looks like a little white, flexible, foamy kind of paper. Um, so what I do, I should have set up my camera on a tripod because I'm holding it with my hand. <laughs> but what I do is I basically just rub it over the copper. And then you can see it becomes nice and shiny. And you can also see the tarnish coming off onto the pad. So it becomes very shiny. You can see where I kind of did it on this side versus where I didn't over here. So it's just a really nice step to do. Um, and I think it's really necessary because the tumbler really doesn't get it that shiny on its own. But yeah, that's it. That is basically how I um, tumble and um, clean my jewelry now after oxidizing. And one more quick thing is that um, the tumbler is supposed to also work hard in your metal. Now I do notice it maybe making it just ever slightly uh, firmer and harder, but I wouldn't say that it makes um, the copper like really really hard or anything because I make those empty frames and then I put the stone in them afterwards um, for a lot of the stones that I'm afraid to tumble and so it's not like too hard to, to bend the wires afterwards or anything so I heard that it you know work hardens the wire but I wouldn't say that it's like a really really significant hardening maybe if you tumble for a super long time it would harden it more significantly. But anyways, that is it. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.